All right, so we left off with some of the caveats to when you can use the Henderson Hasselbach. And, and really, it's only when you've got significant amounts of the acid and significant amounts of the base, conjugate acid, conjugate base, in solution. All right, so let's do a, another example. I'll calculate the pH of a buffer solution, and that is 0.05 molar benzoic acid and 0.15 molar uh, in sodium benzoate. Uh, for benzoic acid, the Ka is 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5. And so just kind of looking at it, we know we're going to get a pH somewhere around 4-ish, 5-ish because of the pKa. Uh, then we're going to adjust that. Uh, I've got a little bit more uh, base form than I've got of acid form, so it's going to be a little bit higher than the pKa would suggest. Right, just the pKa if it was equal numbers of the conjugate acid, conjugate base. It's going to be a little bit more basic. Um, so, but we can set it up using the equilibrium approach. We've got 0.05 molar benzoic acid, 0.15 molar benzoate. I'm lose a little bit in benzoic acid. Form some protons. Form some benzoate. Get my equilibrium concentrations of 0.05 molar minus x benzoate, x H3O plus, and 0.15 minus x. A benzo 8. Right. I can then put that into uh, the Henderson Hasselbach equation, right, where I do pH equals pKa plus the log of aha, so minus the log 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5, plus the log of 0.15 over 0.05, so I get uh, 4.18 plus 0.477, or 4.66, so it's a little bit higher than the pKa would be, so that makes sense. Using our full-on equilibrium approach, we would do K is equal to X times, uh, is going to be X times 0.15 minus X divided by 0.05 minus X. X is small, so they drop out. We get 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to X times 0.15 over 0.05. X is 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 5. We take the minus base 10 log of that, and we get 4.66. We can then compare the two. So uh, we do the pH was uh, 4.66 in both cases. Right? So if, or if I wanted to check my X is small approximation, I could do uh, 22 times 10 to the 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 0 0.05 times 100. 0.044, our approximation is pretty darn valid. Good. So, the other thing you can do is you can stress your buffer. How much is the buffer of a pH? How much does the pH of a buffer change when I add acid or base? Well, I'm going to do this into two steps. One is a stoichiometry step, so I need to do a stoichiometry calculation. So the added acid reacts with a minus. Right, the conjugate base to form more of the conjugate acid. Uh, if I add extra strong base, it's going to react with a conjugate weak acid to form more of the conjugate weak base. Our equilibrium, and then we'll do an equilibrium calculation for the H3O plus concentration using the new values for the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So, in other words, I add acid, it consumes some of my conjugate base, makes some of the conjugate acid. My adding a strong base takes away some of my conjugate acid to form more of my conjugate base. I can then do the equilibrium calculation like I did before. Right? So, um, if I am doing it and I've got a buffer, right, uh, I can generally use the Henderson Hasselbach equation. Right? pH equals pKa plus log of aha, A minus over HA. And that is the correct form. Right? It has the concentration of the conjugate acid uh, and the conjugate base in here, the, as designated by the square brackets. Right? But that's an actual, you don't need to do it kind of thing. Right? This comes out of the equilibrium expression, right? but because my conjugate base and my conjugate acid are in the same container, it's moles of the conjugate acid per liter divided by moles of the, moles of the conjugate base per liter divided by moles of the conjugate acid per liter, and they're in the same number of liters, so those liters parts cancel each other out, and it's really just moles of the conjugate base divided by moles of the conjugate acid. So you don't have to go through and divide by the volume. And this 
that's a really neat property of buffers, okay? So the buffer is going, has, is going to have a pH that's independent of the volume you've got it in, right? So I can dilute a buffer and it's not going to change its pH because I'm still going to have a significant ratio of the moles here, right? So my mole ratio is what determines the pH of the buffer, not the actual volume and concentration. That is not most definitely not the case with a strong acid or with a strong base or a weak acid or a weak base solution. If I dilute any of these guys, the pH will change. Buffers are neat and cool in the fact that you can dilute a buffer, right? Add in a little bit of water, does not ch change the pH. Right. But back to our stressing the buffer, okay? So do it this way. It is much, much easier. Use this modified henderson hasselbach equation, right? If I'm going to add an acid, it's going to be pH is equals pKa plus the moles of the conjugate base minus the moles of the strong acid that you add, and then over the moles of the conjugate acid plus the moles of the strong acid. Right? Similarly, with the base, pH equals pKa plus the log of the moles of conjugate base plus extra strong base you add, moles, divided by moles of the conjugate acid minus the moles of the strong base you added. Right? So looking at what happens, right? if I start off with, let's say, equal concentrations of conjugate acid and conjugate base. I add a little bit of H plus. Well, I've shifted this ratio. I still have a lot in here. Now, if I get it all the way down to one little thing, right, I just have a tiny sliver, I don't have a buffer anymore, right? I'm gonna have to do the full-on equilibrium version with the ice table, right? Um, if I add some hydroxide, I'm gonna take away some of the conjugate acid and I'm gonna form more of the conjugate base. Lose some, gain some, right? And again, if I add enough of these and I deplete all of the conjugate acid, Right, I will break the buffer, and we'll just treat it like a strong base problem. Right, so let's look at our problem-solving strategy. Two parts. Determine how the strong acid or strong base changes our concentrations of acid and base. Well, let's consider a buffer that is 0.1 molar in both conjugate acid and conjugate base in water. If I add 0.025 moles of a strong acid to the solution, what's going to happen? Well, I set up my stoichiometry step here, right? So this stoichiometry step, and I'm going to use some moles here, right? I'm adding 0.025 moles of the strong acid. Well, if I add 0.025 moles of my strong acid, I'm going to increase my uh, conjugate, I'm going to increase the uh, I'm going to end up increasing the conjugate acid by uh, the number of moles of uh, strong acid I added in, so I added in 0.025 moles of my H+. Plus. I didn't add in any A- minus or HA, which means that after the addition, I've got zero moles of H+. Plus. I've lost 0.025 moles of my conjugate base, and I've gained 0.025 moles of my conjugate acid. So now I've got new numbers in here. What if we added uh, 0.025 moles of strong base to the solution? Well, if I add 0.025 moles of strong base, now I will have increased the conjugate base by 0.025 moles, and I will have decreased the conjugate acid by 0.025 moles. So I want to make sure I've got the right stoichiometry for the balanced chemical equation for what I, whether I'm adding OH minus or rather I'm adding H plus up here. Right, if I'm doing an acid addition, I'm adding H+. Plus. If I'm doing a base, I add the base. It's going to take away from, the base will take away from the, the conjugate weak acid and add more conjugate base. Okay. The next step, right, so I've determined the changes in the concentrations. Now you need to calculate the new pH based on the new concentrations. Right, so you do your stoichiometry step, see how these things shift, right? To how the relative ratio shift, and then do henderson hasselbach to solve it. All right, so let's look at our example. We've got 0.1 molar acetic acid and acetate. The Ka is 1.8, 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5 for the acetic acid. So my pKa is 1.74. My henderson hasselbach equation says pH equals pKa plus the log of aha. So it's the 4.74 plus the log of 0.1 over 0.1, which is 0 pH is 4.74. If I add some strong acid to that, well, let's say I've added 0.001 moles of HCl. So before my reaction, I added in, point, I've got 0.001 moles of H+. 
0.01 moles of uh, acetate and 0.01 moles of acetic acid. After the reaction, I'll have consumed all of my H+. I will have taken away 0.001 moles of acetate to give me 0.009 moles of acetate. And I will have gained 0.001 moles of acetic acid to give me 0.011 moles of uh, acetic acid. You can recompute the concentrations. So put them into the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. pH is equal to 4.74 plus the log of 0.009 molar over 0.011 molar. I said this guy went down, this guy went up. I added an acid. That makes sense. I'm going to lose conjugate base, gain conjugate acid. My pH is 4.65. That didn't change very much. It was 4.74, but it has gone down a little bit. If I add 0.001 moles of a strong base, on the other hand, so here I'm adding in a little bit of strong base. Right? Starts off at 4.74. Now I'm going to use this chemical equation, right? adding in 0.001 moles of OH minus. I started off with 0.01 moles of the uh, acetic acid and 0.01 moles of the acetate. After the reaction, this is completely consumed. I've got no moles of hydroxide left. I have consumed 0.001 moles of acetic acid to leave me with 0.009 moles of acetic acid. And I have gained 0.001 moles of acetate to give me 0.011 moles of acetate. I put that into the, the new concentrations, I convert them into new molar volumes, I can convert them into concentrations, and I plug them back into the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Four points, pH equals pKa plus the log of the ratio of aha, the conjugate base to the conjugate acid, 4.47 plus the log of 0.011 divided, 0, divided by 0 0.009, and I end up with a pH of... 4.83. It's a little bit more basic than our starting pH of 4.74, right? but not terribly much. Right? What happens if I just had plain old ordinary water? Right? If I had just plain old ordinary water at pH 7 and I added in 0.001 moles of H+, right? my pH would be the log of the H plus minus the log of the H plus ion concentration, so 0.001 moles in 0.1 liter 2. Right? If I added 0 0.001 moles of OH minus to my 100 milliliters, it would be 0 0.001 moles of OH minus in 0.1 liters, which would be a pOH of 2 or a pH of 12. So this little bit of H plus, if I add it to unbuffered solution, really drops the pH right drastically by 5 pH units. And over here, if I add just that little bit of OH minus, it drastically shifts the pH upwards because I'm adding a strong base to an unbuffered solution. Let's try this clicker question. We got a one liter buffer solution that has 0.12 molar HF and 0.1 molar sodium fluoride. What's the pH of a solution after 0.02 moles of HCl are added? The volume change due to the added HCl is negligible, and it really wouldn't matter anyway because buffers are volume independent. It doesn't matter if we're diluting them. pKa is going to be 3.46. Our solution, our our hint is going to be you use the Henderson Hasselbach equation, use the modified one for the addition of an acid. Pause. Welcome back. The answer is 3.22. Right, so you do minus pKa plus the log of the ratio of the conjugate base to the conjugate acid, but you're going to uh, take away some of this conjugate acid and add to this conjugate base. Here's a quick example from your book. You've got a one liter buffer solution with 0.1 moles of acid of acetic acid and acetate, just like we had before. Uh, but now we're going to add in uh, 0.01 moles of sodium hydroxide, calculating the pH. Well, I'm going to set up my, uh, my stoichiometry step, right, where I'm going to consume some of my acetic acid, and I'm going to add some of my acetate. And this is going to follow through that same example we saw earlier, right? but it's a little tidier here. And this is just another example of using Henderson-Hasselbach to calculate the pH. Right. Um, this one is going to be a, what if I've got a weak base and it's conjugate acid? Right. Same idea, I've got ammonia with a pKb of 4.75. I convert that pKb into a pKa, and then use the Henderson-Hasselbach 
end up with 9.6.